117 of the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Ian. And this is the only podcast that says... Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, your highness. I understand it's a long time. 40 years ago. A long time ago. But still, it's just like, fuck. Right. Like, I hate that shit where it's like... <laughs> yeah, our, our alternative rock station that's... Supposed to be cutting edge. He's still playing. Man, the boss, like, it's brand new. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I would much rather listen to Spotify or Apple Music because it's commercial free. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I, and, I, and I get to pick and choose what I'm listening to. Because, I mean, in all honesty, even back in the day, like, I, like, there was no such thing as Bluetooth back then, kids. <laughs> like, this is the shit you had to endure. Yeah. You know? Oh. That's painful. I want to listen to the latest music in my 79 Plymouth Fury. Right. <laughs> you know, this is how you're going to do it. This is how you're, you're going to do it, yeah. Uh, nightmare. Oh. Man. Between that and then, like, you had the people. Like, we talk like, oh, you shouldn't text and drive nowadays. Fucking my generation grew up, like, going through, like, flipping through, like, folder binders. Of CDs as you were driving to find the right one. You were working hard. Thing, yeah. The only thing that was like really lost on the, you know, CD and tape and cassette tape is you didn't have any more snow scrapers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's like my giant eagle card. <laughs> I mean, like, that was it. I mean, that you was. just fucking popped the. Oh. I love shit like that. Like, I mean, it's like, it's odd. It's like, it's the oddity of like, how far we've progressed in 40 years. Funny you say that. Okay. <laughs> okay, well. As I watched this documentary on Netflix or something. Yeah. God, man, I wish I could remember the name of it. Anyway. He says, he was saying, like, it's a big guy, you know? Yeah. And he's saying, man, we haven't progressed at all. Since World War II, he said, from timeline to timeline, if you right. jump and jump and jump, 100, yeah. 100 years, eight, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, right. like there was this mass push. Right. And then once we got to World War II, yeah, we had jumps, but not like you think we would be jumping. Right. If you look at the past progression of things. Do you know what I mean? Right. And, I mean, it's all conspiracy theory. A lot of it. (laughs) But, (laughs) yeah. But, you know, um, some of the facts, some of, I mean, there was a lot of facts thrown in there. Right. Um, But a lot of the theories and stuff were actually pretty good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And how they're, they were describing how this big setup is coming. Do you know what I mean? With alien technology and stuff like that. Right. And they honestly think that their belief, that, or this guy's belief, is, um, oh man, I wish I knew his name. Anyway, that it's not, they're going to, the media is going to use, because the media is pretty much spoon fed by yeah. the government. Right, right. And their theory is that it's, yes, it's alien tech, but we designed it. And we nurtured it. Right. And do you know what I mean? Right. You you go back to Roswell. The pills and you start, that these, everybody sees. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the, to create a war. You know what I mean? Right. Of people that were doing it. Do you understand what I mean? Like, right. they're setting things in play. Right. Like, when they released the, when Trump wanted the, uh, those files released. And right. All this stuff. And yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it makes sense. But they say technologically, do you know what I mean? Like, going back to Tesla. Right. Right. Like, every, like, there was also a guy that, I don't know if you remember, but he made an engine that ran completely on water. Yeah. Hydraulic. 
Yeah. And he was assassinated. Assassinated, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And so everybody that gets close, like there's this new, they were talking about this new um, old design, but it it was an energy producer. It produced energy. Right. Um, and he said the only people that are gonna, that's going to get hurt from this thing because they they were they were trying to buy the patent is what was going on right somebody else ended up buying the patent right um and the only people that would get hurt by this patent would be big oil do you know what i mean like right yeah these big companies because it would pretty much nullify what they there there would be no need right is what i'm saying yeah so they're with the whole solar thing and green and all this stuff, he's like, it's just, it's just fronting because a lot of this stuff is still manufactured. It's still relying on yeah. resources to get the job done. Right. And so, but like Tesla, what he, you know, what he made, yeah, what his theory of, you know, electricity and yeah, like pulling, pulling electricity from, from the, the air. air. Yeah. yeah. And it worked. Yeah. Do you know right, what I mean? Yeah. It worked. Right. He, but that didn't go anywhere because he wasn't in. Right. Do you know? And so that's, so every patent that comes out um, is actually quickly bought and and sealed. Right. And by the, our government. Right. They buy the patents. So those <clears throat> patents for energy and stuff like that are all held within the U.S. government. Right. So the, Talking techno- technologically, in the past hundred years, in that area, we haven't moved hardly ever anywhere. We're still right. relying on gas. We're still relying right. on diesel. We're still relying on oil. Right. Like the combustion engine. Correct. Should be a, a fossil at this point. At this point, yes. And it's not. And it's not. It's right. very relevant. Right. Right. And so, and there was, it's a, it's a good documentary. I, yeah. You know, take, take from it what you want. Right. Um, but the points that were made were good points. Right. You know, and the people that bought this device, I can't remember the name of the device either. Mine's gone. It's a traumatic day. Water heater busted. Um, but um, the people that, the, that bought this device, like eight out of the ten people are dead now. Yeah. Yeah. Dead. That's so, crazy. So, I mean, and that's factual. Yeah. I mean, that's where the facts are thrown in. And I'm like, wow, that's that's fucked up. That's not coincidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. When eight out of the ten people that were into this thing, you're going to create a new renewable, you know, or a new energy source. Right. And eight out of ten of those people are dead. Yeah. That's, right. And just like the guy that that's created That's eyebrow. Right, and, you know. Right, and the guy that created the hydraulic car. Yeah, he says, "Ah, you can run it forever. Yeah, it cleans itself. No need. Yeah, till he died. Yeah, you know, and it's fucked up. I mean, if you look at the stuff, and I'm not a huge conspiracy theorist. You know, right? Yeah, neither am I. But but there, I believe there are some conspiracy theories that you know, facts are facts. Yeah. And if yeah. you put the pieces together without being in the conspiracy realm. Right. Things add up. Right. No, I agree. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just all. And this isn't a conspiracy theory, but the government loves to have your thumb on you. Oh, yeah. Because that's how they can control you. Right. You know? Right. And so it just makes sense. I mean, they're controlling us with oil right now. Right. Oh, for years. Yeah. But, I don't know. I think America's tired of it. I'm tired of going to the gas station in the morning. And I've noticed it when I started traveling more. Yeah. Like, going to work, you know, 15-minute drive. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But when I'm filling up every other day or, you know, putting... Yeah. 20 bucks in the tank and I'm watching these fucking gas prices swing. Oh yeah. And then go way up. Like one day one day it's like 
75 cents more than it was the day, like not even 14 hours before. Yeah. That's just. No, I agree. I, I mean, there, there's a lot of like, uh, I mean, you know, and like, and it's like the funny thing. I, I, and I, also too, before I lose this thought. Okay. And that's why I'm saying it's all bullshit with this whole green deal or whatever. Right. It's all bullshit. Right. Because the only people that can afford to be real green as far as their cars, their houses, are millionaires. You right. Can, normal, normal average day Americans cannot afford, you know, solar panels and um, electric cars. And, right. You know, Teslas. Uh, who who in their right mind who who drives Teslas? People that make usually make a lot of money. Yeah, no, I agree. Like I, I'm I'm always shocked. In my neighborhood, there is a Tesla. Mm -hmm. Somebody in my neighborhood owns a Tesla, and I'm like, like, where do you charge that? Well, I'm when I went to New York, I I drove in that Tesla. Yeah, and he was a Uber driver. Yeah, he makes. I mean, he's making a lot of money in New York right. driving around, but. <clears throat> at the same point but it's only the wealthy that can afford to go right. green and and it's just like it, but it, it breaks down to more than that it breaks down to eating healthy but here, here here's the other it's side it's expensive that, to eat healthy now. it is it's very expensive I don't care what I, so I've heard people try to break it down to me and there there are you're, they're right in a certain way You there, there are some things you can avoid but to like go like to go straight healthy, like to avoid sugar completely, to avoid, like even like if I go like, hey, I'm gonna go vegan, mm -hmm. like I'm still looking at processed stuff, like it's gonna have preservatives yeah. and stuff in it, and I mean, it's it just it, com compare that to, I don't want to say like I eat like trash, but like. I eat like trash. Yeah. And I can do it rather affordably. Yes. And see, that's the catch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And that's how right. you're controlled. Right. In a sense. Right. You know? So, when like you... If, I'm, if I'm spending $60 a week on groceries, mm -hmm. that's going to double to 120 Correct. If I want to eat healthy. And organic. And organic. Even worse. Yeah. Which is pretty much just a label. Yeah. So... But the flip side of that, and like you're talking about the Teslas and stuff, like I've been watching a show called Car Trek. Yeah, yeah. And like I got into it because I started watching like these Vin Wiki stories on YouTube and Hoovy's Garage and uh, and stuff like that. And they they do a show called Car Trek. And on one of them, they they were driving. It was like a thousand miles. And one of them was doing it in a 2015 Tesla. And, like, in order for them to do it properly, and they, and they didn't, like, but he, like, you have to follow, like, a, a route that Tesla lays out for you so you can get to their charging, charging stations. stations. And, like, the route that they would have taken would have taken them more time because of the lack of. The Tesla charging stations, mm -hmm. and like it just doesn't have the range, right? You know what I mean? Like, like they would have had to have made like compared to like a car, a, like a, a combustible engine car, they would have had to have made like five stops, six stops to make sure that that thing was charged enough to get to their destination. Correct. Where in a combustible engine, three. Correct. You know what I mean? And I mean, and we're talking like the other two guys were driving. I think one was driving a Ferrari and one was driving a uh, a Maserati. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, it was something along those lines. And so, like, and those are gas guzzlers. Oh yeah. You know, but they're still talking three three stops. Mm -hmm. And the Tesla couldn't do it. It bricked. Okay. Like it, it just ran out. Like it, it was telling him he's got thirty six miles. Of charge left and it bricked on him. Oh shit! You know, and so like we as the Amer as Americans, 
like a Tesla is probably great for in town driving. A Tesla is probably, or an electric car of any type, is probably phenomenal for New York City mm -hmm. because you're not you're not pushing 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. Right, right. You're you're doing thirty five tops probably mm -hmm. in, in in the city. You know, you're so it's probably great for like that, but like for the American experience, the average American, like they're driving the Wally World. Yeah, yeah. Like no. that that's the great thing about vacation. Like vacation was like that's what Americans do. Like America if you're in Pittsburgh, the majority of us at some point take a drive down to the Outer Banks. Yeah, yeah. You know, South Carolina. You know, the or you know, we're gonna drive to Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Or we're you know, the, there are things that people do where we're we're saying, Well, that's not getting in a plane, that's a drive. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like eight, ten, twelve hour drive, that ain't a problem for us. Yeah. You know? We're doing it. Right. That's America. That's what that's what I mean I'm America. You know, I, I get it. But but that is the great American experience is the road trip. Yeah, correct. And if you're telling me, like, even the electric technology doesn't have the ability to do that. Right. Like, you know, I mean, and again, it's only for the upper crust. Like, what's the point? Like, I mean, I know, like, I, I also sit here and I say, well, you have to take baby steps. But, man, you know, I, I, I feel like the Tesla is just, the only, the only advantage that Tesla has over the electric car, I saw Bob Barker give away in 1980 on The Price is Right, is that it can get up and go. Yeah. But the problem is when you get up and go, you suddenly lose miles. Right. Like... It can take off like a rocket, and it can go 150 miles an hour, but it's going to go 150 miles an hour for so long. Right. Like, right. And you can say, like, well, it's the same thing with a, with a regular car, Sean. You're right, but the range is greater. Yeah. Like, my, you know, highway miles, like, don't forget, if I'm on the open road, the faster I'm going, the better mileage I'm getting. Correct. In all honesty, like, I mean, that's how a combustion engine works. Once you get on the highway and you can open it up and you can put it in fifth gear and you can let it fly, you are going to get better gas mileage. But with a Tesla, it's the exact opposite. Right, because it drains battery. Right, or with any with any electric car, it's just the Tesla has. And I, again, I'm watching these videos. I've seen some interesting stuff. Like you know, some of these Teslas, I mean, they, they, I've you get pushed back in your seat. You feel G, G forces when you. Slam on the accelerator. It's crazy. It takes off and goes. Oh man, they are fucking fast. They are. Like it's sick. Yeah. I mean, sick. It is. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. You know, to go five miles. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. I need to find a, a Tesla charging station within five. Well, that's miles. That's something they need to improve on. It but is. I think another thing is, if you want to go electric and you want to push these cars, electric cars, because there's other electric cars too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, but, you know, at your gas stations, you know, if you got to the point, ideally you'd want 50-50. 50, 50. 50 charging, 50 combustible gas. Right. Right? Right. Gas stations are going to be like, fuck, you ain't putting that bullshit in my lot. You'd be surprised. I well, just saw the sheets in, um, um, newsstand. Union Town? No. It's right off the turnpike, off of 30. Um, New Ken? No, not New Ken. No, no, it's um, North Huntington. Okay. North Huntington. God, I kind of like spit that. Right across from where Nancy works. Okay. The, the sheets there, because they're adjacent to the turnpike, they just put in Tesla charging stations. Where are you at? 
Well, you're in North Huntington, yeah. <laughs> I get that. Upper you don't crust. see that down on Fifth. No, no, you do not. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> like I agree. But what I'm saying is like it's where your clientele is, and that right. that's a perfect example because it's really only for the upper crust. Right. But I also found it because it's right there near the Turnpike as well. Right. That was what I figured. I, I didn't put that part of it together until right now. But my thought was, well, it's near the Turnpike. I guess that makes sense. You'd pull off because it's a, you know, you got your Tesla charging station there. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. But yeah, I, I guess, yeah, you, you put that in there as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a upper crust environment. Right. But that's the thing. It's like everything's, everything's, is it just so they can say, oh, we're going green? You know what I mean? Hell, I mean, I'm sure that the guy making $35,000 would love to go green. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, he still has the gas bill, and he still has the electric bill, and he still has the gas that he has to put into his car. Right. What I'm saying is, like, I think that guy would really like to go green to save some cash. But also, too, you have four kids and you're making $35,000 a year. You're on government benefits now. Right. So now they control you. Right. You know what I mean? It's not... I know that sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's truth. It is. I mean, they they got like, your foot on your neck. Right. I mean, and there are, like... <laughs> even, like... I mean, the, the ridiculous, you know, you can't collect rainwater laws. Yeah. I mean, that's nuts. But... Oh, if, but Why? But yeah. that, that's the thing. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's water from the sky. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why can't I have that water? Yeah. And it, yeah. But the other thing, too, is like there's a lot of like oddball laws that prevent you from going green. Like having like a, a, a wind generator. Because mm-hmm. um, I've seen like a lot of technology where like... They've improved that to the point that it's not like, you know, giant fins or anything. Like, you know, there are some very small modules that, like, right. for a per, for a, for a, a home mm-hmm. work very well. And, like, especially where I live, like, I mean, there, there's plenty of, of breeze that would power that at oh, all times. I know. You know, but, you know, I like zoning ordinances and stuff, have, like, really limit. Yeah, I know. You know. Pittsburgh. Perfect example. Yeah. City of Rivers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Our never our rivers never run dry. No. They don't. We'll have a drought here and there, and you'll see the yacht dip or the mon dip. Yeah. But there's always current. Yeah. Strong current. Yeah. Why aren't we harnessing that? Right, I agree. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like we could power the we could power, power the entire Allegheny County with the amount of fucking river water we have. Yeah. Just by the current itself right. generating electricity. A perpetual motion machine. Right. It's all here. Yeah. But we're not doing that. Yeah. I'm not saying put a wind turbine in Braddock, but what I'm saying is like right. we have the rivers. We can do it. You know? Yeah. We don't have the land. Like, say, out Midwest, where you can put up, like, a shit ton of solar panels or whatever. But right. we do have the rivers that have that current all the time. But we don't do it. Right. You know? I thought the best invention that I've seen in a long time, as far as, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, green energy and stuff like that. I'm sure it was only for the elite, because, you know, no one else can get it. It was uh, Elon Musk invented... Those freaking uh, the solar shingles, shingles, yeah. Oh, oh that amazing. was incredible. That was one of the be- That was in one of the most ingenious things I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, and they're like rock diamond resistant. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I thought that was amazing. What an ingenious design. Yeah, I haven't heard shit. No, I haven't heard anything about them. Right. Not. I mean, I didn't even expect it from a sale point, but I haven't heard anything about it since. No. No, he did that that unveil and that like that was a cul de sac in Georgia or whatever it was. Yeah, and, huh? yeah. Government called me. You gotta shut that shit down. Yeah, no, we can't, we can't be doing this. Can't be doing that. And I'm not, not not that I'm defending Elon at all. 
you know, I mean, I, I don't want people to think that. I mean, because I, I think there are some things he says and does, and I'm like, really, dude? You know, mm. I mean, but he also, like, they're, they're, like he has great ideas. Like, I can't, I, you know, those things are there. I think he has great ideas, but I also think that he has think tanks as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I mean, clearly. I mean, he's But I think he Edison. treats those people very well. I hope so. Yeah. I hope he treats them better than he treats the people at Twitter. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, that's... I know, I'm not defending him either, but... Yeah. But those are the kind of people in this world that we need to make... To move to move forward. Right. You know what I mean? Not necessarily him. But right. what I'm saying, we need these bigger people to move forward with this shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... I don't know. We get so political. And we never but, get political. But, very rarely. But here's the thing, you know. What, what? Out of all this, you know. Why do we have people going hungry in this country? Right. Do you know what I mean? Why? Why, why are there people starving in this country? And right. We, and then we donate to Africa. To, to feed or who whatever right to why there there should not be the amount of farmland that we have of course the government yeah. again comes in with the farmers there we should never go hungry no ever <laughs> right you know what I mean right but we do I mean there's a lot of shit there's a lot of unrest in the United States and I don't know I, I just wish that some of the population would just open their eyes a little bit. I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I'm, I'm not. Just open their eyes a little bit and say, hey, that's fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why doesn't this kid have any shoes? But we're sending a million and a half pairs of shoes to, I don't know, the Congo. Yeah. But this kid down in... Down in yeah, Louisiana doesn't have any shoes. Right. Or they're worried about what they're going to eat the next day. Right. That should never exist in this country. I agree. Ever. Right. Ever. All right, let's go. All right. Wow. Wow. Wow, indeed. That was a... It was a statement. It was. It was a political uh, unleash. <laughs> <laughs> A deluge, if you will. And the next presidential candidate is Ian Bowman. (laughs) (laughs) Except mine would be brought in by, like, Steve Vai. (laughs) Just gonna play Yankee Rose. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The National Anthem, baby. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, there we go. You don't like how America's going? <laughs> I got something for you. Whoa. <laughs> America's beautiful. <laughs> She's a Yankee Rose. <laughs> oh. That'd be tremendous. <laughs> I don't know. They don't have... David Lee Ross swinging in on Vine. Oh, no, don't. I know. Not current David Lee Ross. If you go back in time and get that David Lee. <laughs> the presidential, like, like you know, I'll go to, like, New York. A fucking David Lee Roth comes on that big fucking microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to do the split jump. Oh, no, yeah. Dave, don't, don't. Classic. Oh, uh, Do you remember what somebody thought was a good idea to give him a morning radio show? <sighs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, but it's Roth, right? So right. Roth's gonna be Roth. I know, but, but there's some Looney Tunes out there too there, that have radio shows. Oh, I agree. Like, I agree. I mean, look so at I us. mean, like, I know, but I mean, like, so throwing Roth in, I don't care. Right, but like, it was. 
I mean, first off, he was replacing Howard Stern. Right. Like, that was the thing. Like, he was replacing Howard Stern. And, like, when they put him on, I was just like, what the fuck that, is this? He was out of his element. Way out. Yeah. I was just like... Not that we're in the element. But. Yeah, no. But, I mean, like... I, what is he doing? <laughs> it was the strangest fucking thing I've ever heard. And it lasted, like, a month. <laughs> like, immediately they realized, like, oh, we have really fucked this up. Yeah, he's like, something wrong with this cat. Yeah. Too much coke, man. Yeah. <laughs> I would listen to Sammy, though. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> just to get on the, you know, just I just want to throw that controversial yeah. tidbit. Yeah, <laughs> controversial tidbit, yeah. Yeah. I like listening to Sammy. Oh, I love listening to Sammy tell stories. It's, I know, It's perfect. It is. It, it absolutely is. Like, yeah. I, I, I watch him I on the internet. I would listen to him at, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I, he's just, he converses very good. He does. Yeah. And he's like 80. And he's like a real person. He is. Like, I mean, he know, he's not like, I mean, no. he's not a real, well, he is, but you know what I'm saying. Right. Like, well, he owns his own fucking island or some well, shit. Yeah. Well, it's that thing I told you, like, when you, when you went to go see the, the Best of Both Worlds tour with, with Roth and, and Sammy, I told you, because you were like, oh, I'm all for, I'm, David Lee Roth is going to be amazing. I'm like, David Lee Roth is going to be the party. Oh, man. Sammy Hagar is inviting you to the party. Man, that turned, that turned me, man. Sammy was amazing. But, you know, how old is Sammy Hagar? I, he's, like, in his 70s. Like, honestly, like, he's, like... I want to know. Because, like, Mon... I want to know the exact age. Mon- Montross was, like, the 70s. Like, 60s and 70s. Yeah, yeah. He's 75. Okay. He's 75 years old. Yeah. How old's Biden? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? How old's Biden? 80? Give me a second. Mm-hmm. He is eighty years old. Yes. Okay. Eighty years old. Scranton, so, Pennsylvania. He's got five years on 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 yeah. Sammy. Yes. Who fucked their life up? I mean, who abused their body more? Oh, definitely Sammy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. That dude is fucking pickled. I mean, he is. <laughs> hey, the man had his own tequila company, <laughs> but his mind is still there. Oh yeah, yeah. And he's sharp. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know it sounds like I'm putting down Biden, and I and I kind of am a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think he's done some good things. I think he's done some bad things. I'll take what he's got. Right. You know what I mean. But I don't believe in another term for him. Here's the thing. Here's the kicker. Right. Okay. So Joe Biden's 80 years old. Okay. okay. And I'm not trying to make this political, but Paul Stanley's like 95. William I'm Shat William Shatner's 92. Yeah, I know, but Shatner's got the rosacea too. Man. But at least Rose, Shatner's got his faculties. Did he ever have his faculties? <laughs> you know I mean? uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel confident I could have a conversation with Bill Shatner. I don't know about Uncle Joe. Mm. Yeah, let's get off of all this. Let's get off it, yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Oh, I can just hear it now. I can just hear it now. <laughs> um, well, I've been watching the show Car Trek. It's on YouTube. It's a yeah. YouTube show. Um, it's basically a better version of um, Top Gear. Okay. From like Top Gear is an amazing show when it was done by the BBC. Okay. And then they tried to do it in America. And it was fucking awful. Okay. Okay. But, so it's like, these three guys are like trying to do their own version of Top Gear, but do it their own way. And it's very entertaining. Okay. I am somebody 
I do not have a bucket list. Okay? Like, everybody has a bucket list. This is shit I want to do before I die. I, I've never had one of those. Okay. I now do. Okay. At some point, I want to... This is going to sound weird. I want to cannonball across the U.S. and back. Oh, that'd be good. Now, I don't want to do it... Like, I want to do it cannonball style, but not. Like, and for those who don't know, like, there was actually a an organized race in the 70s that was called the Cannonball Run. Yeah. And it was an illegal race from New York to Los Angeles. Yeah. And it was, a, you know, this big hadoo. It, they did it for a number of years, and then they stopped it. And then they brought it back in the two early two thousands, I believe, uh-huh. and they started doing it again. And um, it, it, you start at the, the the Red Bell Garage in New York, and you drive all the way to the Portofino Hotel in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I think like the the record is like twenty six hours okay. to get from the the Red Bell Garage to the Portofino, yeah. or something like that. Something, something like ridiculous. Ridiculous, some ridiculous number, but somebody did it during COVID, so it's like some people question it. Like, is yeah, it really a good record? Yeah, nobody was on the road. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but anyway, like, so I don't want to do it that way. Like, I want to do it because, like, when you if you do a cannonball, like you're getting a car and you're like putting like extra fuel fuel cells in it. So, so that you can limit the amount of stops that you're taking along the way and stuff right. like that. Like, it, there is a whole bunch of shit you put into this. I just want to do it where, like, semi legal. You know, a few miles over the speed limit. I'm not trying to do 120 miles an hour, but just nonstop from like Pittsburgh to the West Coast. Turn around, come back the next day. Yeah, like you'd probably be looking at like if you do it. Relatively non-stop. You're probably looking like 40 hours each way. Yeah. So you like get to L.A., you'd spend the night in L.A., and the next morning you'd wake up and you you drive back. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's like two routes that like are like the known like cannonball routes. There's a northern, northern route, route and, and a southern, southern route. route. Yeah. The most the more popular one that people take is a southern route because it's faster because you're going into Texas and New Mexico and I would go northern. No, the nor- That's well, the way I'm. Well, like what I, my thought was, like maybe you take the northern route there and the southern route back, okay. or something. Like that. But anyway, that's my bucket list item now. Like I, I'm, I'm, I would love to like, like just like rent a car, yeah, and do it. You know, to me, like two other people, maybe, maybe. Of man, course, me. Of course, you. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. Well, I don't want to assume. Yeah. It'll just be like, it's, it's just this odd thing I want to do now. That's cool. Like, I'm inspired. Okay. You know, so, I'm not saying I'm doing it this year. I'm not saying I'm doing it next year. I'm just saying, like, at some point, I'd like to find myself in a position where this is something I could do. Yeah. You know. That'd be good. It would. I, I, think, it, I think it'd be interesting. How many people? I think you'd need a total of three people in the car. And you do it like you do it in shifts, like eight hour shifts. It's like one person drives, one person sleeps in the back. So it's a straight drive. You don't want to stop anywhere. No. N- maybe, you know, we, uh, hey, we're going to stop for gas at this time. Dinosaur man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're going to stop for gas here. While we're here, let's go have something to eat. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not rushing. Like, like, I'm not trying to break a record or anything, clearly. Yeah. You know. I'm just trying to like. I'm just trying to do it in a way like it's it's a cannonball style yeah. of almost nonstop, but at the same time, at a leisurely pace. Yeah. What's behind the green door? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to stop at every hoot nanny or like you know hey let's go see the world's biggest ball of string, but I'm just saying like you know you're shooting through you know hey that's. You know, I'm not, you know, trying to, like, you know, 
eat Doritos as I'm driving. No rush. Is what no I'm rush. Saying. Yeah. So like, if we stop and I, hey, it's 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 dinner time. Let's uh let's get some gas. We'll fill up on gas and we'll. There, there's a there's a Howard Johnson's diner here. Let's eat there. <laughs> you just dated yourself. I know. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop at the hedges. <laughs> Pick up some hookers. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna stop at the palace inn. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Howard Johnson's. What are you, 90? <laughs> Fine, you don't get out of the house at all. <laughs> Howard Johnson. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know that or Cracker Barrel. You need a trip tick for this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> wow. I think it would actually be cool if you didn't use modern technology on routes and you just used maps. I think that would actually be pretty cool. <clears throat> that would be interesting, like getting like an almanac type of deal. Yep. Yeah. Almanac in the United States. And be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta turn to page fifty-seven. Shit! Please let me put on ways. No. No ways. <laughs> Schwarzenegger's not coming on. We are. Uh, that's tremendous. I. You know, it's funny. I. You, do you ever use Waze? No. Oh, that's great. Did I tell you this? No. Oh. So Waze, I like it better than I don't. I do and I don't. Okay. Right. So I I like maps on Google because it like um turn on to Mononga High Law. You know yeah. what I mean or whatever. Yeah. But it it actually has it spells out everything. Right, but if you pick an alternative voice on Waze, mm -hmm. one is one of those voices is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not kidding. I know you're not. I know you're not. And um, so we're going to the airport the other week. Yes, yeah. Fraley, and I have the girls in the car. They're in the back seat. And Nana's in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking put on Waze and see if she says anything. Yeah. And uh, Arnold comes on. Didn't even phase her. <laughs> like, yeah. are you live? Did you not hear Arnold Schwarzenegger? Completely lost. Except for the girls. They're laughing right back. Right down. Two miles. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. It did. I mean, I've always said. He'll, he'll, he'll go. Like, it doesn't say, like, Mononga Hill. He was like, in two miles, turn left. That's what he says. Yeah. In in five miles, make right. You yeah. Know? But what he said in this, the best is when there's, like, a stalled vehicle on the side of the road. Yeah. He'll go, there's a stalled vehicle, 1.2 miles. Get down! <laughs> That's what he says! I swear to God! I swear. I swear to God. It's the best. It is the best. It's, it is. I've always said the the best like voice for that was Sam Jackson. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker, you got a left turn in two miles. You know. Why don't they do it? I don't Shit. know. I, I'm pro probably, you, Arnold, probably, probably because of children. Arnold is the fucking best. Like, oh. It is so good. I just I just I it amazes me every time I put it on. <laughs> it is. Like, it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Where to? Okay. Uh, there we go. He's pulling up the app. I have to. Yeah. I, it's, I fucking love it. The more contact I have with humans, the more I learn. So let's get started. Drive. <laughs> This is a piece of it. Yeah, it's it's the fucking best. Yeah, when there's a when there's and he tells you about speed traps. He tells you about you know what yeah. I mean. Like I'm like, 
I want Arnold on every trip I take. Yeah. The only thing I don't like, like on straight shots and stuff like that, I like it. Yeah. But when it comes to inner like inner city driving, yeah, I much rather have MapQuest on. Yeah, yeah. Because it tells me street names. Yeah. Because in Pittsburgh, oh yeah, the fuck he'll say turn left four hundred feet. <laughs> yeah. There's three fucking lefts, bro. <laughs> yeah, like which left am I taking? <clears throat> but he does go. He he will say turn left now. Yeah. You know it's I fucking love it. I fucking love yeah. Arnold on my fucking phone. That's hysterical. It is. I fucking love it. I know I sound like an old man, but I do. I fucking love it. Well, speaking of old men. Yeah. All right, so an end of an era, if you will. We talk about, you know, back in the day, the using the physical media in our car and whatnot. Yeah. Well, there is a physical media service coming to an end. Okay. I didn't even know they were still doing this. Okay. But Netflix DVD service is coming to an end in September. I think there's one in the Elizabeth. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm. But yeah, so like after 25 years, which, I, again... A shocking number. Um, in September, they are bringing uh, to a close their DVD by mail service. Okay. One, are you surprised that this service still exists? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly am. Like, I knew somebody a couple years ago told me that they were still using that service. And I was dumbfounded by that. <laughs> like I, and then like it like drops from my mind and like like I saw this, I'm like, wow, that's still going. Like the, the the article I read said like they don't know how many people actually subscribe to the service. I'm I'm and like as of twenty eighteen it was like three million okay. subscribers to the service. Uh -huh. Compare that to the two hundred and fifty million worldwide that are subscribing to the streaming yeah. service. Yeah, yeah. Now, for those who don't know, Netflix did start, like their business model was a yep. DVD by mail service. Oh, yeah. That's how they Th started off. This is what buried Blockbuster. Yeah. In all honesty. Mm -hmm. Because you could get the DVD, you could have it for as long as you want, and you returned it when you were ready to get something new. Yep. You know, and, like, you could get, like, depending on, like, the, you know, how many you want. Like, I mean, you could get, like, two, three DVDs at a time. Yeah. You know, you know now, I mean, for, the, for more than one, you were paying a higher price. But still, like, that was, like, an option. Like, you know, so, like, I mean, I think when we signed up for it initially, I think we, we were getting two, two at a time. Yeah. And, then, you know, we'd return them and... I mean, it came with a little envelope. You put the DVD in, you sealed it up, you dropped it off in the mailbox, and you waited for the new one to come. Yeah. And it was there in a couple of days. Yeah. You know? And, like, you went on their website, and you selected, and you put them in an order of, like, this is the order of, like, I want them to be received. So, like, obviously, newer movies were probably in higher demand, so you were put on a waiting list for those. Yeah. But outside of that, like, you know, something older... You might be able to get much more quickly, but you had like them in order that you, you know, and you could keep adding stuff to the list. It, from a business model standpoint, it was ingenious. It was. Because you're waiting in the mail. It's like, you know. Right. Like, uh, I don't know how else to describe it. Like, uh, you know, like. Like the music man. <laughs> I know yeah. this is a weird scenario, but it's like right. this. Uh, what's the fucking song? The. Uh, it's coming down the street. I wonder what it's got for me. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And it's that excitement of like. Right. The Wells Fargo wagon. Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo yeah. wagon. Yeah. 
coming down, down the street. street. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, like, you're waiting, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, is it going to come today? No, fuck, it didn't come today. Oh, no. Right. And then, like, on Thursday, it comes. Oh, my God, it's here. You know? Yeah. It was kind of like that magic. They really tapped into that. They did. I mean, America loved that. I uh, mean, America. America. But yeah, I mean, it it really did. Like, I mean, this was, and I mean, my understanding is that they went to Blockbuster first and was like, and was like, get the fuck out of here. Oh, We're Blockbuster. It is. Yeah. And, you know. See when that turned out. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, and quick, like, you want to talk about, like, the collapse of a, I mean, between that and the Red Box. I mean, I'm not saying Netflix did this solely on their own, but between between that and the Red Box, like Blockbuster and home video stores just disintegrated. Yeah. Like immediately. Yeah. Like there was no like slow death. Like they just went away. And it was a shame too. There, there was because there was there was something magical about walking into a Blockbuster or like a a home video store and. Finding that movie, or maybe you see something odd you're willing to give a try to. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there was something magical to that that, that like, is missed, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I miss... <clears throat> Not just Blockbuster, even the Mom and Pops, right? Yeah. I mean, I miss going... To that video store. Yeah. And looking for movies that I want to watch. Right. Even on VHS. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, because that back in the day, that's all it was. Right. But, um, you know, it was cool. You know, like the businesses were doing well, maybe had like three or four copies. Right. Of yeah. Aliens 2. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was cool. And then they had their own waiting list. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I just thought that was, like, the coolest well, you, thing. You get that call, like, uh, Mr. Coon, we have Platoon in for you. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go. I just thought that was the coolest thing. It was. You know, and it was something that you did with your parent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or, like, you know, before you were driving and stuff yeah. like that. You. Oh, yeah, me and, me and Big Chuck going to Pittsburgh Video to find a movie to yeah. pirate. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, but, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like, that was a cool thing. It was. And it was it was definitely a cool thing where you were like, wow, this is cool. You know, we're going to go home and watch, we're going to watch some movies tonight. Yeah. Then Blockbuster came out and you're like, Phew. and they had 20 movies of new releases. Yeah. And it was all out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you had to suffer. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the whole experience was, like, actually pretty cool. I miss that experience. It's well, I, the experience that I've never had to do with my kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because there's something about, like, it doesn't feel right about walking up to a machine and picking out your movie. Nah. Like, the, I mean, don't go, I, I think the red box is a fascinating idea, but I, I think it's kind of going the way to Dodo as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, it was a, like, it, the idea of it was like, brilliant. Yeah. You know? Um,. <laughs> But I, I, like, it's just this interesting thing of, like, there, there just, there was, there was a magic of that experience of just walking in to the video store. Like, even, like, and this is the thing that people don't understand that are of a younger age. Like, shit like that was so popular. Like, you would walk into, like, Unimart. Uh -huh. Unimart had, like, a, a dedicated owl of movie rentals mm -hmm. that you could get. Like, it was, like, this just really interesting time. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, and I, like the technology is more strong. I mean, I, I'm certainly not poo-pooing streaming because I love streaming. <clears throat> um, but there is something missed to that. And, you know, Netflix was part of the reason that that went away because of their model with using the mail. Oh, yeah. You know, and... You know, you didn't have to go to the video store now. You just, you went on your computer, you picked out what you wanted. Yeah. And you waited for it to arrive. 
I mean, how many times did we go in that Uni Mart at the top of the hill? Oh yeah. When he when he crashed over my house. Oh yeah. Hey, your mom would just like, well, we'll just go rent a movie. We'll just go right over that Uni Mart, get some chips, gallon of milk, and uh, yeah, some you lunch know, meat. Yeah, and uh, some sandwiches and watch movies. Yeah, and Conan. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, but when I was, but that was it was part of it. Though. It was. But it was like a. It was like a bonding experience. It was. No, I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you were so excited to get that movie that's never there. Right. All of a sudden, oh, it's there. I mean, even, like, I even remember, like, like, the mom and pop places in particular, they would rent you a VCR. Like, we didn't have one. And, like, one weekend, I, I think my dad was hosting a... a a bachelor party. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, was, it was a bachelor party. But, so he rents the VCR, and I'm sure he rented, like, a couple of... Sure. A couple of... Uh, behind the beaded... <laughs> behind the beaded curtain movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he also rented... That, that was one of the first time I saw um, Back to the Future. Yeah. And I felt rich. Like, I felt like this is how the other half live. Look at this. I'm watching Back to the Future on a VHS cassette... On my television, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. like it was like such a like fat. Like, you know, it wasn't long after that. Like you know, we did get a VCR. Like my parents said the money. I think it was an income tax thing, and you know, we got a VCR. Sure, because they saw like how much I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it was like one of those things where like like so the home video store helped create that experience for me for the first time. Right. You know, and it's just one of those things. It's like it's it's a bummer. Like it's a bummer that Netflix isn't doing it anymore. Like that's going away. Even though I haven't used the service in a, in you know ten years. Right. But yet at the same time, there's a part of me that's like kind of sad because that's just again the deterioration of physical media. Right. right. You know, clearly the physical media isn't is as in demand as the streaming services are. Right. And that, say that as somebody who like, you know, all of my CDs are in a box in the basement. Yeah. You know, all, but the majority of my DVDs have been, it's hypocritical of me, like, like bemoan, like the death of physical media. But, there was something to it. There was like a pride of that collection. Sure. You know what I mean? Both on VHS and DVD and Blu-ray. Like, there was a pride of like, look at what I... I this is me. Like, in many ways, that's what a, a, a collection of DVDs and music CDs are. Yeah. This is who I am. Right. It, it's just like books. Or records. Or records. Yeah. Like, But... Like, this is, I'm proud of my book collection. This is who I am. You know? Right, right. And you don't have that anymore. And the people who do still have it, they're either doing it in, like, a kitschy kind of way. Like, oh, look at my DVDs, you know. Or it's somebody old who just refuses to let go of the physical media, which I respect. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, like, vinyl's made a massive comeback in the past 10 years or yeah. more. Like, I mean, it really has. Like, I, I can't deny that. And there is a certain aspect of vinyl. I mean, I, going all the way back to episode 200 with Henna, where he talked about dropping the needle on uh, Def Leppard's uh, Pyromania. And, like, you know, those first, you get the, the cackle of the, uh, the, the album, and then those first notes hit, and he's immediately back in his bedroom as a 13 year old you know right right so like i get that and i i, I even get like younger people because there, there is a certain quality to vinyl that you know you're right you don't get from a digital experience i completely understand that but at the same time like like to me it's like you know time has definitely marched on and going back to what we were saying at the beginning of this show right Man, it's a whole lot easier for me to just throw on something off of Spotify and listen to this playlist or just this app. You know, I'm usually like, you know, I'll play a whole album. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, be like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm not a playlist guy. I'm like, you know, I want to listen to this album because I had that album as a kid or I had that CD as a kid or I had that tape as a kid, you know, whatever it was, you know. So it's it's interesting stuff like that that, you know, yes, in the modern era, digital media does definitely rule the day. Right, right. But at the same time, I, there is a little part of me that's like, man, physical media is dying and that makes me sad. Yeah, it does, in a sense. I was talking to someone the other day. I was working with this guy. And uh, we were talking about uh, <laughs> just music in general. Yeah. And uh, we were just talking about, you know, best concerts we ever went to. You know? Yeah. And I told him the whole National Record Mark Metallica third row and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was like, Something from my past that I'll, my kids will never experience. They yeah. experience it online, but it's different when you're waiting in a fucking line of a hundred people, right? Hoping to pull that magic fucking ticket, yeah, to get the seats that you want, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just different now. Oh, I, I agree. Mean, it's there's so many things that are. Camping out at Century Three Mall, right. waiting for the the doors to open so you could run to National Record Mart or Kaufman's, correct, and get to the ticket counter, right? Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, you know, and it's just now it's you know apps. Yeah, that's it, and we're dependent on it. We are, uh, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a very it's a very interesting like juxtaposition because like I mean I even like remember like I mean waiting in line for Star Wars right like you don't experience that now you know, you've bought your tickets online we all have assigned seats now so you don't have to worry about like trying to get there early to get to your seat like it's like that. that's the odd thing like there there was a thing like even like with the prequels like you know I stood in line for tickets. Right. You know, to get to see the prequels. Like, that, that just... And, I mean, I, I guess there's a part of you could say, well, well that, we're, we're for the better now because you don't have to stand in line for your tickets. Right. But there's also a part of me that's kind of bummed out by that because it was an experience. Right. You know, you were there with people of a like mind, you know, Right. Maybe you saw some somebody in costume and you told them how cool that was or you know th- there was something to that that shared experience we all had. And the same thing with like waiting in line for concert tickets. Like if you're waiting in line for like Metallica tickets, if you're waiting in line for Springsteen tickets, if you're waiting in line for the Stones, if you're waiting in line for Guns N' Roses, like you were all together and you had a shared love of something. Right. You know what I mean? And you got to celebrate that with with that with everybody you know right you know maybe you made a new friend because of it or you know whatever like it, it was it was like this interesting bonding experience that is just not there anymore it's not it, it, it's just not there yeah you know maybe i'm just getting old yeah you know i mean that, that is it i mean that's that's the price of getting old right you know, yeah. but at the same time, though, like I, you know, the flip side of that is, well, no, you didn't have that wackadoo experience of standing in the rain for two hours waiting to get into the mall to go get tickets to a concert, but you do still have the experience of the concert, right? No, yeah, true. You know what I mean? Like yeah. th- there is there is something else to that. Like I'm, you know. To play devil's advocate, I'm sure somebody out there will. <clears throat> Stork. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that there there is something special still there. Like, you, you are still having a, a different shit. No, you don't have to wait, you know, in the snow or the rain. But at the same time, you do have some other constant experience that you get to enjoy with others who want to be there with you. Right. So... Is it better or worse? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but 
like I know I, I just know that there are experiences I've had doing stuff like that. Right. That I wouldn't trade for anything. Yeah. Oh, I know. I, me too. Yeah, you know, but the flip side of that, there's a part of me that's like, you know, man, if I could have just bought my tickets online, that probably would have been a whole lot better. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Very interesting. It is. It is, yes. So the, the one other thing I wanted to talk about, this, this was something I saw last week and we didn't talk about because we were so busy just blowing Picard in the, uh, in the Mandalorian. <laughs> we were. Um, Wait, me. Yeah, let me, let me get, that, get that off my, my nose there. <laughs> um, so the Russo brothers, they apparently have a TV show coming out on Netflix and they were doing the... Uh, the media for it, and uh, they were asked about, you know, would you work with James Gunn in DC Entertainment? And they said yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, clearly. Yeah. I mean, they they said yes, we would love to, and there is a, a certain, you know, cowed uh, hero that we would love to try to do. Okay. So, they're saying they want to do Batman. Now, this... The thing to remember here, folks, is... This wasn't... James Gunn hasn't offered them a job. They're not petitioning for a job. They were just asked a question, and they answered it truthfully. Right. Yeah. And... I feel like... I mean, that makes sense. Mm. Like, I could see that... Like, I, I feel like, first off, they probably have a very good working relationship. They're no longer doing business with Marvel. And if James Gunn was to approach him and say, hey, I love what you guys did. Um, there was a lot of stuff you did with, you know, my characters, with the Guardians that, you know, or whatever. Like, I just, you know, you guys do good work. Would you be interested in doing something with with me and with what we're doing here? Right. I'm sure they would probably jump at the chance. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's different and it's new, but it's the same. And yeah. You've ta- and you've gone as big as you can go Mm. damn near i mean come on end game and infinity war is like agreed you know but i still want to see a secret wars oh yeah we all do we all do but like do you do you think Do you think the Russo brothers could could do? I, 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 like, what do you think a Russo brothers Batman movie would look like? Jesus. Oh. You know, I don't know the answer to that. I. It was so. The Avengers was so. There were so many people in the Avengers. Yeah. Right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was so almost too many, in my opinion. I mean, there were so many people involved in that in the Avengers that, and now you're dealing with one person. Well, okay, but don't forget this: they also directed Winter Soldier, yeah, and they directed Civil War, yeah, true, right. So, I I don't know. I, I think it'd be cool, but, I, man, I think you need to lay off the bats for a while. But they're not. I know, but I, I mean, mean that's, like, that's the thing. Like, DC's already announced man. they're doing a Batman movie, you know, and it's Batman with Damian Wayne, which I find interesting, Um, which gives me hope that we get Dick Grace in his Nightwing instead of Ezra. I mean, clearly he's going to be... He's not going to be Robin. That's going to be um, Damian Wayne. But, you know, I hope, hopefully we get a Dick Grayson as Nightwing as well. Mm. Like, I think the, the interesting thing is, and, and this is what they've shown me, is they can take direction uh-huh. as far as this is what I need from this movie. This is what... You know, and that's what James Gunn's trying to do. He, he he's cr- trying to do what Marvel's already done, 
right. and that's create this universe, this interconnected universe. And so he's going to tell them, okay, here's the movie. You've got to give me X, Y, and Z. Right. How you get the X, Y, and Z is up to you, but you have to give me X, Y, and Z. Right. Because I need X, Y, and Z for this this project and this project and this project. You right. Know? So I feel like that's something the Russo brothers can do because they did it with Civil War. They did it with um, Winter Soldier. You know, and then they got to play the ultimate game of you know, here's everybody. You know, like that that that's the movie that you build to. She's gonna stab you. Gee, I, I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so I, I feel like they, they can take those directions. And I you know because like I, the problem you run into if you're if you're James Gunn and, and whatnot is like you've already kind of said this is what the stories are right because you've talked about like even with the Batman movie like it th- this is the base of it you know these, this Grant Morrison run with with Batman this is where, right you know so you you you've kind of already laid down the this is what the foundation is and we're gonna build upon that for for a movie so. If I'm a director or a writer, I don't know how jazzed I would be because you've already laid down the direction of what my movie has to be. Right. Whereas I feel like with Marvel sometimes, you know, it's, you need to give me X, Y, and Z, but how you get to X, Y, and Z is up to you. Yeah. Like, but like in the case of Joss Whedon, that could cause problems because he didn't want to give you X, Y, and Z. In Age of Ultron, Mm-mm. like there were stuff that he he had to concede, and there was stuff that he had to, to do to get what he wanted. You know, he had to do the Thor in the lake scene to get the farm scene, right? You know, like there there was give and take that had to be done, and like at the end of the day, like he talked about, like this is why I walked away from Marvel. I didn't want to do give X, Y, and Z. I wanted to tell my story, right? right. You know. Where I think the Russos are a little bit more malleable to that, but I don't know how many people are. Right. No, I get that. Like, James Gunn's announced he is going to direct a Superman movie. <laughs> now, he's also said, though, because, like, the first thing people think is, like, and, and, and rightfully so, because if, if you... I don't know how familiar people are with James Gunn. If you've only seen the Guardians movie, and if you've only seen, you know, the, the Suicide Squad... Then you think he's just a jokey guy. Yeah. But he's not. And I feel like like, he can bring... As much as I love Cavill as Superman. Like, the one thing that Superman has to be is hope. Right, right. You know, and I loved Schneider's take on it. And I loved Schneider's take on Pa Pa Kent, especially. Right. Because Pa Kent was like, yeah, you should let those fuckers drown. (laughs) Right. You know. Yeah. You you have no idea, you know. And like so like Superman and that was kind of the point of Smallville, the TV show is the the character of Superman is is molded by the values that are instilled into him by his earth parents. Right. You know, Jonathan and Martha Kent. And you know, so like Jonathan Kent in, in is a dark character in a lot of ways because he's trying to protect his son from what's inevitably coming right and telling me you have to hide this you have to keep this hidden at at all costs and if all costs means like a busload of kids drown i'm sorry (laughs) because now the town knows right and who 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 doesn't say somebody from the town says hey guess what this kid did and now all of a sudden the government's coming yeah and they're taking you away from me my son yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that—that that was a like, it was a very interesting take on the character, and I appreciate it. And it molded that character for the majority of his his run. Yeah. Like, because again, like Superman has to be the bastard. Like the, the S on his chest. What's he saying? 
it, it, it means hope. Yeah. But you don't represent hope. Yeah. Like, not until the end of Justice League. Yeah. Do you really get to that point? Like, as hokey as the Christopher Reeve Superman is, that's Superman. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, 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 yeah, yeah. Like, like, he is the, I'm going to smile as I fly around the world. I'm going to give you the wink before I, you know, do what I got to do. Like, that. that's Superman. Like, and I love Cavill, and I love everything that he did, and I, I, I think his, his version of Superman was a very interesting and a modern update of it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm hoping James Gunn can kind of get, pull, pull that shade back of darkness. Yeah. And lighten the character back up. And he doesn't have to be, aw, shucks, gee whiz, but, you know, there, there has to be a little bit more of, like, just that... To everybody, he's the beacon of hope. He's he's the guy that you know has everybody's best. He's gonna stand up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. But I mean, I understand what gun, what not gun, what Schneider was doing, especially like in Batman v Superman with like the government like being like, you know, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. yeah. This we can't have this. This is omnipotent being who could turn on us at any time. Right. 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 You know what I mean? Like. I got that. Like that that makes sense to me. I you know, but I don't know. It, it, it's a it's a tightrope and I hope Gunn can walk it. Yeah. But at the same time, like it's like I feel like the Russos would be a very interesting choice to do a Batman movie because I feel like they would understand the character. They would understand Batman, like every single incarnation of Batman gets darker and darker and darker. You're right. You know, like Robert Pattinson's Bat- The Batman. Amazing movie. Man, he was dark. <laughs> he was. You know, and like, I'm not saying we gotta go back to Adam West. Yeah. I, you know, no. But I would like to Here's see. Here's your shark repellent. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my bat shark repellent. You know, yeah, get it yeah, right. Yeah. But I would like to see it go back a little bit to a a lighter version of the character a little bit. Okay. Like he doesn't have, like I said, he doesn't have to be Adam West. But like I don't, I don't know. Like there's just there. There are just interesting moments in in time where Batman has made realizations. And like and and just as. I mean, Pattinson did it at the end, and he realizes he can't be vengeance. He has to be justice. Right. You know? And I guess maybe that's the journey that character is on, but man, it was dark. <laughs> it was. You know? And so I'm... But, like... And I think this is what I loved about Affleck's character. Like, I want to see him in, like, gray and blue. Okay. You know? Not black. Yeah, I, I love to see him go like blue and gray. The onesie. Not, 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 not like I mean, like the skin suit. <laughs> yeah, the like, black cat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. Like, I, I just like the cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was more Val Kilmer and uh, yeah, uh, what's his name? The movie shall not be named. Oh, uh, Chris. Uh... No. No, who played Batman in that one? Clooney. Clooney, yeah, Clooney. Yeah, yeah. Clo- Clooney had a the butt shot. Yeah. Oh, that was I, terrible. And he had a, history. He had a cod piece that rivaled uh, Bowie's and in, in thank God he lived in Yeah. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> yeah, rivaled, not equal. It rivaled. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, he had a beer bottle down there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like I, but I just like, I, I don't know. Like just go back to a little bit more of like that look. Mm. I, I'm not saying he's got to be like again. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to see like you know. Um, like 
the Super Friends version of of Batman. But like, I, I would love to see like something a little bit more along the lines of Batman the animated series. Okay, like he was dark, but he wasn't like that dark. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like it's a weird thing to say, but like I mean, there was a darkness there, but that there was also like a a humanity. To okay. the character, okay. there's a little bit that. more of an easiness about it. I, I, I yeah. you know, I get it's a cartoon and it was meant for kids, but there, there it was something to that because it was based partially off of what, um, they had done in the movies already up to that point. With, yeah, uh, you know, so it, it it's I, I just like to see it like pulled back a, a bit. Okay. It's like it's like every director is like, let's go darker. Yeah, no, you know? you're right. And, and like I, I, there's a point where it's like you know. Yes, it's a dark character, and he has, but there are also some things where, like, if you like read the comics, if you if you look at like, like I said, like Batman the animated series and stuff like that, like he's he's he can be pulled back a little bit. Yeah, you know, but All right, that's fair. Yeah, I don't know. That's just me, like you know, making a wish list, and I feel like the Russos could do that. Yeah. I mean, Winter Soldier is a dark movie. Oh yeah. If you really watch that, it's a, it's it's a it's one of the darker movies of the series of the the the, the entire MCU. Yeah. With everything that's involved with it, and, but you know, so I I feel like you could you you oh, can. Oh, it's a very dark movie. Yeah. I so I feel like you can you can you can de- but you can definitely pull Batman back a bit, but still be. God, Winter Soldier was good. It was. It was so fucking good. And one of my favorite parts um, in that movie is when, that countdown. Yeah. When he's telling Bucky. Yeah. Nine. When he's... When yeah, when he's reciting the words, yeah. Oh, I was like... Yeah. Dude, that's badass. And his reaction, he's like, fuck, let me fucking That's Civil here. War. Civil War. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. When he's out of there, and when he was like, yeah. That was so good. Yeah. But Winter Soldier is a good movie. I liked everything about Winter Soldier. Like, yeah, you know, Winter Soldier is like a top five in the MCU for me. Yeah. Like, it's a hard movie to beat. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's so many of them now, it's hard to, like, kind of, like, rank them anymore. Right. But, like... That's definitely like one of my all-time favorite Marvel movies. Right, right, right. And it's it's, it's probably one of my all-time favorite comic book movies. Mm-hmm. You know, like I mean, like it's just because it's. What's your favorite version of Cap? And I, I, we won't we won't expand too much because I know we're running time. What do you mean, like in the comic books? No, like in the movies. In the movies. I, I, I think I mean probably Civil War Cap. Alright. Like I really like Cap and Winter Soldier. I mean you go back I mean in the the first Avengers movie, like he, he the the fir, like if you go back to, to the first Captain America movie, I mean that makes sense, like that version of Cap. Even in the Avengers, he's still the man out of time. I, I like by the time you get to Civil War, he's kinda caught up a bit. You know what I mean, mm. and but he's also making a stand for what he believes in. You know, which he does in in, in Winter Soldier, but like this is like you know, no, no, the Sokovia Accords are wrong. Like this is wrong. Like and I, and it's like that that thing of like, I often find myself like, like even in the comic books, like the comic book Civil War, I agreed with Cap. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, the unmasking of the of the heroes and the, 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 the Superhero Registration Act was like, no, you know, and, and Parker was the proof. Like, Iron Man convinced Peter Parker to take off his mask, and that just led to shit, you know? So, like, it's like that... I often find myself, like, siding with Cap, and, like, in, in Civil War, it was like... I... Cap kind of makes sense. Right. You know, I love Tony, but, man... 
you're, you're off on this one, buddy. But I get, I also got what Tony's stance on that was. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, well, we were rocking and rolling, you know, that we killed people. You do realize that. Right, right. Like, you know, and we need to be reined in a bit, maybe. You know, like, and Cass, like, no, no. Nah. Yeah. So, like, I, I like, Government I like. Government control is yeah. no good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I kind of like that version of Cap kind of making the stand. Yeah. And uh, even at the end, like, understanding, like, you know, I, I am, you know, I get it. Like, I'm, I am a man on the run now, and I don't care. Oh. See, that's my favorite version of Cap. Yeah. That man on the run. Yeah. When Vision and Wanda came down. Yeah. And all of a sudden you hear the music and you're looking and you're like, dude, that's badass. Yeah. That fucking Kenobi beard and shit. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's like, pff, renegade boy. Yeah. I was like, that's badass. Yeah. I thought so, anyway. Like, even like when, when Cap shows up in um, Infinity War. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that moment where Cap shows up in Infinity War and he, he's still like, you know, the renegade, the man on the run. Yeah. But like when he shows up and you got the full beard and he catches that spear and he's just like, you know, I, I, that's a badass moment. Fuck yeah, dude. You know, the music hits, he comes out of the shadows and you're just yeah. like, fuck yeah, Cap. Yeah. You know, so. A little dark there, Cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then he re- finds himself again. You know, he finds himself again in that last movie where he's like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, dusting himself off and like that whole "I can do this all day" mentality. Yeah, it yeah. never left him. You know, first adventure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the brilliance of the Russo's movies, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I, I, I like they I, understand the arc. They do. And I and I think they can do that with Batman. It's just, do I want another one? You know what I mean? Like, do I want another? <clears throat> do I want another Batman saga? That's the pro. That, right that, now. Right. I mean, that's the big problem. Is I mean, like I, that's why they've been laying off X Men for so long. Yeah. It's just, just let it fucking. Why well, I, I think dissipate and chill right. for. I, and I do think that is the problem with X Men is like there were so many of them, and not that many of them were good. Mm-mm. Like that's the other side of it is like, and there's a bad taste left in your mouth from the X Men, and we need to wash that taste out. Right, like to bring back a good gambit would be good. Yeah, like a good gambit. Right. Um. But no, I mean, I mean. God, for years and years and years, they focused on Professor X and yeah, and Magneto and right, you know, Wolverine. Right, that was it, pretty much. Yeah, and then they came out with the new ones, and what did they focus on? Professor X, Professor Magneto. X, Magneto, and Wolverine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like there are other characters there. There's much more complex stories there that they just kind of like poo-pooed and it was just kind of like yeah I, I, there's so much more to this than what you're showing the audience the the complete missing the boat on kitty pride and um colossus yeah like their story yeah is so good it is and i felt like they captured some of that and not that, but I, I felt they captured some of that X Men magic and um Oh my god. Where they went back in time. Oh, um Days of Future Past. Yeah, that was a great X Men movie. Yeah. And but they still focused. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But um I just felt like they missed the mark so many times on the X Men and just leave it le- left a bad taste on so many people's mouths. Yeah, you know, if they, if they would have gone through the route of if more of the movies would have been a like with would have been more like that the Magneto part in the forest. Yeah. They would have had home runs every single fucking time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, 
that was a magical moment for X Men. I mean, for for yeah. that series, it was right. just like, oh my fucking god, seriously. I mean, it, it actually brought a tear to your eye. You know, right? What I mean? Well, I mean, like, but then they it just it went away. You get something as phenomenal as Logan. Oh my god! And you get something as just a massive turd as Dark Phoenix. Yeah, they fucked up that story twice. Right? How can you do that? Yeah. You know, and I think I think with those fuck ups, you have to lay low. Yeah. And I have to mention another character that was so good in the series that stole it was Quicksilver. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Evan Peters is quick, so I mean, yeah. it's just beautifully written. Yeah. I mean, it's the way it should have been. Right. And they kind of fucked up what they, yeah, with the whole sister thing and everything. But Right. But what I'm saying is, like, that was a beautiful moment. I yeah. mean, that was just good writing. Anytime he was on screen, you focused in on that. That really shouldn't be your focus, but right, it was. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. I just... I think you just need to let l- lay low. I yeah. think the best version of of us, um, uh, God, what's his name? Man, my brain is done. Not metal. I mean, come on, Colossus. Yeah, Colossus was Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah, as crazy as that sounds, that was yeah. the best version of him right. that I've seen. That is Colossus. Yeah, what what Reynolds did with Colossus and Deadpool is what Colossus who that's who he is. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's who Colossus is. Right. That's nuts. Right. I agree. Why can Reynolds do that? Right. But it cannot be portrayed in anything. Else. Right. It's that's crazy. It's frustrating. It is. So hopefully now that the X Men are back in MCU, yeah, proper, right, more justice can be done than that. Fingers crossed. <clears throat> I, I've doubted. I've doubted. I, I there hasn't been anything that I haven't liked. Right from the MCU. Well, here here's the thing. Like here, here here's the litmus test. In all honesty, if they can figure out how to do the Fantastic Four, they'll be able to figure out how to do X Men. Yeah. Because I mean, let's face facts. I mean, that yeah, was if they that, can pull the Fantastic Four off. Right. Yeah. They can do anything. Right. Because I mean, that is like you talk about. Hey, we won't go into that. Well, I mean, dead in the water. Yeah, X Men, the one X Men movie is like the, one of the biggest turds I've ever seen in my life. Oh. So. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You that, mean Fantastic Four? Yeah. Yeah, Fantastic Four. Yeah. Oh, four. Yeah, that like that one with Michael B. Jordan as as Johnny Storm, which I didn't mind him as Johnny Storm, but man, that movie was bad. That was horrifically bad. I mean, how can you fuck up a property like that? I don't know. Like they fucked up a property so bad that they canceled the fucking comics. Yeah, yeah. Like Marvel was like, we want nothing to do with this. And yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. How can you do that? Yeah, I agree. It's pretty bad when you <laughs> when you look back and you. <laughs> The first Fantastic Four was better than what they produced yeah. later on. Oh, yeah. Because that, it wasn't a stinker, but it, it wasn't really that good. No. What's his name was good? Thing Michael, was Michael good. Chiklis, yeah. Oh, Michael, Michael was, Chiklis got it. He yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. I agree. But everyone else was kind of like, yeah. What am I watching here? This is like Green Lantern level. Yeah. I mean, Chris Evans was even bad as. Oh, Johnny Swarm? Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, I mean, Chris Evans was so bad as Johnny Storm when they announced him as Captain America. I was like, ugh, that's not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, honestly, I was like, oh. But here's proof to the pudding. Script. Right. right. It's all about script because we know Evans can act. Right. 
I mean, it's the same with, Dead, with Deadpool. I mean, if the average person sat there and, like, the guy who played Green Lantern? Oh, that's not going to be good. Yeah. I had no idea. You know what I mean? And he comes off a dead point. He's like... Yeah. Nailed it once. Nailed it twice. Twice. And now, you know, he has a soccer team and... Yeah, and <laughs> no. he's getting nailed a third time. Yeah, with Deadpool three. Yeah, I'm confident. Oh, I have no, no, a doubt in my mind. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, is there anything like you'd like to add to proceedings, there, sir? I'm good, son. Well, remember there are a number of different ways you can reach out and touch us. I guess an email. Let me let me get. The, Thad does have an email that's somewhat worth reading. Let me get to this real quick. I almost forgot about this. Okay. Um, so, Thad went to Kennywood last weekend. Opening weekend at Kennywood. Okay. For those of you who don't live around here, Kennywood is the local amusement park. It is a yeah. a national treasure. Okay. Um, so, he, he stays right off the back. Matt, you, if you are going to bring weed into the park, you will be wrong. You will be yoked out of the line. They have several police yep. police dogs sniffing every guest, even you even before you even walk in the park. Police, for weed? Well, I, I amongst other things. I mean, you know, but don't they sniff for guns? Anyway, <laughs> guys, police presence is everywhere. The fucking weed. Yeah. yeah. Somebody on weed's gonna do a mass terror in Kennywood. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. yeah. Well, maybe maybe a sniffing from bath salts. <laughs> bath salts. He says the park looked great. The new building and fresh paint. Um. Rode the jackrabbit in the cold. Loved it. I went over to the pizza. Watt House. They now have flatbread pizza using their original recipe. I don't know what that is. Kennywood pizza is good. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever had Kennywood pizza. Oh, yeah. It's actually pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, they also offer wings and fries and Italian hoagies. Hmm. I had the pizza and it was great. I also used my souvenir cup for the first of many free drinks of the season. What a jackass. What a jackass. <laughs> I went to the potato patch next and had some fresh... Some French fries and gravy. Oh. I know you were by that <laughs> fucking kangaroo bathroom. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> After all that witch's brew, dude. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Man. Uh. <laughs> yeah, riding the jackrabbit at night wasn't the highlight. Yeah. Fucking the fireworks in the fucking jack in kangaroo bathroom. That's what oh. was going on. Whew. Oh, man. I couldn't do that. <laughs> There's no way. Well, I don't know if he ate all of that. I mean, he definitely ate pizza, and then he had the French fries with gravy. I don't think he ate their wings in the Italian. He's just saying this is something that they offer. Oh, I thought he ate yeah. all of that. Oh, no. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. He's fucking waddling around Kennywood. Oh. Yeah, I'll take that fruit drink. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that funnel cake. Um, <laughs> walked around some more, rode to Thomas... Thomas train and a couple more rides. Why? I don't know. The park is in tip top condition. I went to Lost Kennywood where the new Permanis will be and it looks to be under construction. I can't wait for some Permanis in a Pittsburgh amusement park. Uh, why? 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 Um, for, for great first time, I, I will be back there on May the 6th. All right. Um, so there you go. There's a, a our review of Kennywood Park by Superfan Thad, who is a uh, enthusiast, if you will. I would like to. Know, I'm gonna have to look this up. If there is a way to just buy a general admission ticket, you are fucking old. <laughs> just so I can go eat the food. <laughs> you are fucking old. I know. You are grandpa level I know. now, boy. I know. That. You need a you need a grandpa hat, <laughs> the fucking scrambled eggs and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sitting by the merry-go-round. Yeah. Wow. You're like, I just want a general mission to. Yeah. That's so I can see everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. 
I never thought I'd heard that come out of your mouth. I know. I know. But, like, I have no desire to go and ride rides anymore. I'm too big for that anyway. I hear you. You know, but at the same time, I would like to go and, you know, enjoy the tasty treats. I, I, I will admit that I do miss that part of going to Kennywood a lot. Okay. Like, you know, and especially, like, like that I talked about the pizza. I, the pizza is phenomenal. I mean, right. it's... And, uh, you know, just, like, simple stuff like that. Like, I, you know, spend a couple of hours just have, eating some snacks and taking my leave. Okay. Right. You know. I don't want to spend all day there. I don't want to, you know, just to go and enjoy myself, relax a little bit, and then get out. All right. But I'm sure it, like that would cost me like you know thirty five dollars. Yeah. All right. So remember, there are a number of different ways you can reach out and touch us. Hey, you can send us an email like Thad does. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. And that email address is pittsburghnerd at yahoo.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd. We're very, very easy to find. Uh, we're also on a number of podcasting networks. You can find us on the Tangent Bound Network, the Weeby Geeks Network, and the Pod Breed Network. Uh, just give them a Google search and you'll find all the other great podcasts they have to offer. Nice. <laughs> I know this. Yeah. We've only been doing it for like 10 fucking years. I know. Yeah. And, uh, Lastly, as always, I want to thank you, dear listener, for checking us out each and every week. We hey. can't thank you enough for that. Be a friend, tell a friend. And uh, on that note, the dreamer has awakened. Peace.